Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome to a new episode of Tester Tech. Today I'm going to show you a very interesting project and it's called a web top. And actually it's a container based application uh, that is being developed by the Linux server.io project. And I'm going to show you how to get started. And uh, yeah, if you're wondering what, what it's all about, actually you end up with a fully working Linux distribution that is accessible inside your web browser. So it looks something like this. And in this first episode, I'm going to walk you through what it is, where it comes from, and how you could use it. So without further ado, let's dig into the video. So let's switch over to the workstation. Yeah, this is the end result. It's a fully, it's a fully working Linux distribution that's accessible in your web browser. So let's first uh, discuss the features. So what you can do is, of course, yeah, put some files in here, and just know that uh, I will get. I'll show you the configuration later, but just know that uh, the files are stored. Uh, if you store something in the config, you have the mapping to your host system, and that's the, where they're accessible. Uh, just know that, and. Uh, yeah, I will discuss later uh, more in detail and uh, investigate about the bootstrapping and maybe how to create your own image. That will be probably be interesting as a follow up video. But first, uh, just the basics. Uh, okay, here we have the, the files. I created the test and I created uh, the snippet. Put it uh, here. And what you can easily do is transfer some files to uh, here. Click open this menu. Here you have the, the file cabinet, if you click on it. And then you can, uh, for example, upload files. For example, wallpaper, say this one, for example. And it will upload it uh, straight to your machine. And now it's present here. All right, so that's the way to transfer files uh, from your host to your client. It's uh, good. It. Okay, and what you can also do is, for example, yeah, the keys. Let's say you have an i3 distribution uh, of this, and then you will have the window or the alt key. So if you're in this view, then you will want to trigger that windows or alt key, right? So for example, windows enter will open up a terminal. If you hit the windows key now, for example, Windows D, then this is in the host. So uh, if you want to lock it, you can press it here once, press enter, and then it will open up a terminal. So I was struggling a little bit with that in the beginning when I was looking at i3 for this. Uh, just to know that you can uh, lock. And for example, here, click this control delete, you can send it, and this sends it to the client, right? So uh, to force a reboot or something, that's uh, the good. So that's the keys. Clipboards, if you have text here. And if you have, for example, let's open up a terminal and paste. Here you have the same text. So it stores it in, in, the, in the clipboard that way. So you can from your host uh, easily copy and paste the text. Full screen, I can press it. And now you have the, the whole thing running in full screen. And you're not even aware that you have, uh, yeah, that you have uh, the windows running in a, in a Docker container. Pretty cool, right? So to exit, think escape. Yeah, escape uh, brings it back. Nice. Game cursor mode. That's the way uh, to lock your cursor in the center. I'm not going to press it now. You know that you can. It's also interesting that to know that you can maybe play games. Yeah. Those could be a use case, right? Uh, some other settings is quite extensive. If uh, things like uh, stream quality, compression level, uh, stuff about logging, uh, stuff like that. Yeah, on uh, the settings. And you can disconnect here as well. And later when you come back then you can connect and it resumes exactly where it was open up a folder for example disconnect 
later come back and it's st uh, still the same because of course it's running in a, a container. So these are the basic features. Uh, also sound works. That's also nice. Uh, yeah, uh, these are the basic features. And uh, let's look at uh, some variants. Let's also look at uh, some underlying uh, technologies. Uh, and dive into a little bit deeper. All right, let's dive a little bit deeper. And let's say you have a machine and yeah, it's a container based workflow. Meaning you need to have uh, Docker or Podman. Actually, I did try it with Podman first, but uh, it was working for the most part. But some things were not one to one. And I decided for this video just to use Docker. Uh, so yeah, not to sometimes be a little bit embarrassed if it didn't work right. So uh, I know that it's tested on Docker, so it should work there. And indeed it all features work. Uh, on, on docker so uh, sidestep um, so you need to have docker uh, and also docker compose and uh, if you want to install docker just uh, head out to docker.com and click get started you have uh, two buttons at the top uh, how to install docker and directly download it give it for mac uh, intel based mac uh, m1 based silicon based uh, windows and linux uh, just pick your uh, your operating system, doesn't really matter, at least for this video. Uh, make sure you install it. And there's also some extensive guide. You have Docker uh, and myself. I have the CLI client. So what did I do? I followed a guide. Uh, this system I'm working now is RHEL, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So I just did uh, Docker install RHEL 9. And a couple of the guides are there already. And I think I followed this one. Tech admin one. Yeah, so I followed this guide and um, that worked. So if you're also on RHEL, just make sure you copy the CentOS link anyways. Because this does not even exist. Uh, there's no packaged version specifically for RHEL, at least for RHEL version 9. I haven't checked the other ones. Just know if you use CentOS, that should uh, indeed to give the right source code. Uh, just know that. Let me show you real quick. In case you're thinking what the what talking about. So this is CentOS 1 and then you have uh, 9. All right, so CentOS 9. And then you have here the distribution. So that's the thing we use, of course, if you have an Intel based uh, computer or AMD. Uh, and then you have the stable, for example, packages, and you have all the required packages, right? So Docker Compose is in there, Docker CE, uh, and CLI is also in there, Containerd. Everything just uh, works, should work. There's CentOS, Debian, Fedora, Raspbian, uh, SUSE, Ubuntu, and also a static one. So pick your poison. And uh, this should work for the most part. I follow this. Worked okay. So uh, that out of the way. Uh, let's go back. So then you have Docker installed. And let's say you want to test if it's uh, working. So uh, I'm going to do Docker PS. And you see here I have it indeed running. The web top already running. Right. That then running. Okay, the Linux server IO project. Um, yeah, I heard about these kind of applications before. And I think I haven't tried it uh, before because it was quite a lot of tinkering, to be honest. So if you look at the web top, this is uh, one of the first posts, I think, about the subject in uh, 2021 uh, on this site. And here you see that it uh, indeed uh, it works and it worked with uh, Guacamole server, XRDP server. And here are some uh, basic usage and indeed you see a fully working uh, desktop. So that's nice. <clears throat> and already the user ABC. 
All right. Uh, and later on, uh, they switched from uh, the guacamole to here. So the maintainer, the lamer, big name, lamer. Uh, he he or she explains here uh, and that uh, switched from guacamole to the chasm VNC. So that's uh, quite a bit better in terms of uh, usability. And from now on, the most of these images probably will work just with the, the chasm uh, version. But uh, I haven't checked everything, of course. All right, so that's that. Uh, Linux server IO. You have here all uh, the web page on the Docker Hub. And uh, actually, you have some, yeah, some good contact information here. Uh, about architectures and also about uh, the version tags. So the latest will be XFC E Alpine. And Alpine, that is a, a variant of, of Linux. And without the, without the GNU utilities. So it's a quite lean and mean. Yeah, so uh, you can use that, of course. Uh, but you also have the full swing uh, distributions, as you can see here. Uh, Ubuntu, Fedora, Arch, Debian are also available. Yeah, and all the variants with the desktops and also i3, like I mentioned in the beginning, Openbox, Ice WM. So quite lightweight. Uh, so Ice, Openbox, i3 are lightweight, but heavier, of course, are KDE, uh, Mate, uh, but no uh, GNOME in there. All right, so if you have set it up, uh, depending on what you configured, we'll get to the configuration in a minute. You can access it to uh, local host. In this case, if you run it local, 3000, 3001. So 3000 is for standard and 3001 uh, HTTPS for if you have a certificate there. You can specify the ports here, uh, users and subfolders and everything you want. And of course, this uh, DRI, um, that is an option if you um, want to have DRI. Oh, this one actually, actually. So dev DRI. Mount a GPU into the container, and that can be used in conjunction with the DRI node, which is this. But um, yeah, it's for now on, I don't know everything about it, of course. I'm just uh, first time I really give it a go. And of course, it will be interesting uh, to see if you can get graphics acceleration in the in the virtual machine in the in the container. Then you can play around with Hyperland, for example, because that requires uh, CPU acceleration. So here are the, the supported open source drivers, and you can also expose the Docker sock, so you can use Docker inside that container, basically. Yeah, and something with privileges uh, in the and maybe increase the security or isolate it more or less, depending on what use case is. For now, I'm not going to bother with that too much. And because it's on my local machine, I will suggest you judge yourself what you want to do in terms of security and confinement. So this is the the, the basic uh, yeah YAML file, and um, I have a directory of course already. Go into the um, here uh, webtop. A couple of them and uh, webtop YAML and webtop XFCE YAML. This was the one I showed you in the beginning. Let's look at that one view. So basically it's the same configuration. The only thing I changed was the yeah the tag. Webtop latest I changed to X, Ubuntu XFCE. It's the only thing. Uh, and also the ports. So I left these because this is the client and this is our host port. So I can access it uh, using 3030 by a machine. And you just know that, yeah, for me, I left it like this. So it's actually created a Path to data on my file system. Not not that uh, big of a deal, but just know that if you have path to data, I already uh, it created this path for me on my file system. 
near it also stores. Just know if you want to have a more sensible uh, directory, then make sure to change this before you run it the first time. Else it will create it on your system, but uh, not a big deal for me. Clean it up later. And yeah, that's basically what I wanted to show you. And let's say you have that YAML file here. Or if you're in the directory with the web top uh, docker uh, compose file, web top, the web top file you want. And if you tap up, then it will bring up the container. And if you don't want to see this message, then you do up and then hyphen D and then it will not show these this information but yeah that's that's okay you can uh, do whatever you want of course localhost the port you specified yep I think that's uh, that's about it and uh, let's go to the closing of the video and that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you liked it and maybe learned something new. So like I said, this is part one. And next part I will look a little bit deeper and uh, try to look at the bootstrapping or maybe also look at how you can create your own image so you can create your custom uh, web top. And if you reach it all the way to the end of the video, thanks a lot. And probably interested in more of this content, please consider subscribing. The thumbs up will be greatly appreciated. Helps me out a lot with the channel. That's it. Bye bye.